what is an email nowadays in the organization and of the organization also email is one of the preferred method of personal and professional communication right whatever you want to ask you get the information you want to take the information you want to give the information inside the organization to your friends or anyone all right what do you use you use emails right because of its ease of use and speed correct that is your emails all right now it is see every every thing has two faces right two faces of a coin in the same way email has become a powerful tool for the uh, for the individuals also but uh, a powerful tool for cyber criminals also because using emails we have so many kind of attacks that are going now right now all right i will be just uh, doing what manipulating the email that i got from an organization reverted back to the to the you can say uh, admin or sales team. and since those teams in the organization they are not too much technical right they can they don't understand that what is what is written over there so what is it uh, i will be using that email services for compromising the systems all right that is how your ransomware attack works right so that is that is why emails are becoming you can say a very uh, important platform for attackers to attack all right so we have two kind of email security incidents guys we have crimes committed by sending the email all right crimes by sending the emails and second is crimes that are supported by emails crimes that are supported by emails now can anyone tell me what are the crimes that are being committed by sending the emails anyone anyone guys correct it's phishing then we have spamming correct one of the uh, well known attack then we have mail bombing we have mail tomming and we have malware distribution right then we have what are crimes supported by emails what are the crimes that are being supported by emails the crimes that are being supported by emails is identity theft that is identity theft then you can do cyber stalking right then you can do child pornography also and child abduction these are what these are the crimes that are being supported by emails so email incident are divided into two categories that is e crimes committed by sending the emails and crimes supported by emails, all right then we will be discussing one by one all right spamming you all know correct you all know spamming in spamming you get unsolicited uh, emails in your in your uh, mailbox all right which can cause network congestion all right can perform phishing and mm, you can say can perform financial frauds also all right then we have phishing everybody know what phishing is guys we write it over here phishing what is phishing it is a technique in which attacker sends an email or provides a false link to get the confidential information the account information of an individual right so depending upon the phishing we have so many types of phishing we have smishing we have wishing then we have next uh, that is called your spear phishing then we have a farming then we have next that is called wailing so what is smishing guys what is smishing correct man sending messages with malicious link right then we have wishing wishing means calling, calling directly with yeah how many of you have got the call who are especially in india so how many of you got the call from um, from the people saying that we are talking from rbi there is a there is a problem in your bank account we require your bank details so that we can we can sort out that uh, problem have anyone got it till now i am the one who got it guys i am the one all right 
so that is your wishing all right then we have next that is called spear fishing what is spear fishing guys spear fishing in spear fishing attack the attackers do what they target a particular group of person in the organization all right specific people that's correct specific people in the organization then we have next farming attack in farming attack it is bit different from your fishing attack because in farming attack you do what the attacker do what it it uh, redirects you to 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 some other website all right all right that looks legitimate but over there you will be doing what you will be typing your credentials and as soon as you type your credentials you will be caught all right your details will be compromised then we have veiling attack what is veiling attack is the name of this guys it is attack correct correct uh, seo support to it's correct veiling attack is to attack the most powerful person in the organization yeah that is c level people right ceo cfo these kind of people now it is not like that these attacks are going one way guys nowadays the attackers are using two or more attacks all together all right he may be using veiling attack along with impersonation you might would have heard the name impersonation right impersonation means pretending to be someone else who is he is not that is impersonation right now i am i am mm, mm, spear fishing uh, targets specific group not not the uh, high level people no no santosh so, uh, veiling uh, attack high level people the c level people in the organization all right then we have guys this is your fishing attack all right uh someone was asking that is there any site yeah you there is there is certain kind of way use all right uh, focus see praveen uh, we have a website that is called netgraph all right it is considered as the best anti phishing website you can note down the name for this netgraph all right netgraph anti phishing website so you can you can note down the name and you can play with this website later on all right netgraph then we have guys next these are your what these are your phishing crimes committed by sending the email that includes your phishing attack all right then we have next that is your so what to do what sorry, to, uh, yeah, sorry yeah 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 that uh, netcraft uh, what is inside here yeah, netcraft what exactly do it is a website that uh, provides you anti phishing services you can even uh, let me open it these are the uh, uh, you can see options that are available over here all right so you can do one thing you can open that and you can you can use it later on all right it's not uh, too much uh, over here so you can do one thing you can uh, even complain about you can say uh, suspicious urls over here all right you can get the list of all the suspicious urls and other kind of information you can do all right that is your net graph yeah okay okay yeah then we have next guys that is mail bombing what is mail bombing so it's it's kind oh, of boss oh. leader sort of mm, okay yeah see it is an act of sending multiple copies of identical content to the same recipient all right all right because you are doing what you are sending the mails in excessive amount to a particular person that is mail bombing all right then we have next time supported by emails guys what are time supported by emails time supported by emails is you can say uh, identity theft as i told you identity theft is impersonating someone right when someone steals your information all right and uh, use it for fraudulent purposes i'll be telling you i'll be telling you arvin all right how we are going to identify and how we are going to detect all right that i'll be telling you okay yeah then we have guys uh, identity theft you can have child identity theft you can have criminal identity theft you can have financial identity theft you can have identity theft cloning all right that's why it is said 
that an open public platform and social media platform never reveal your confidential information never ever your your driving license number your your uh, passport number your other card number your your other details never ever include all right never ever upload because the people can perform impersonation attack on on uh, using those information all right and later on you will be doing what you will be getting the bits all right so that's why it is said then we have next that is your cyber stalking all right cyber stalking everyone know when a when a people when attackers harass a individual or a group of people in the organization all right that is your cyber stalking then we have child pornography all right it is again a criminal offense where child or minor is depicted of engaging in sexual explicit content all right that is your child pornography uh, you might would have uh, heard the news that uh, last month in the month of april there was a pilot air india pilot that was being deported back to india because as soon as he reached usa i guess so he was he was seeing this child pornographic content and he was caught red handed and at the same time he was fine and he was deported back to india all right then we have child abduction guys what is child abduction it is wrongfully removing or wrong, wrongfully retaining retaining or concealing a child or baby that is your child abduction all right that is your child abduction now how you are going to prepare for email security incidents what is the preparation phase <coughs> so first is email filtering all right you will be installing email filtering tools all right to filter and block all malicious emails transmitted across the network first thing that is your preparation phase all right then you will be using email monitoring tools all right all right that will be checking for malicious attachment links all right messages as well as sensitive data in uh, incoming and outgoing mails all right that is email monitoring tools then you will be having what you will be having a proper communication channel if anything uh, suspicious is going in the organization you will be responding you will be sending data to the incident response team all right you will be communicating then then we have acceptable usage policy all right in that is your email usage policy all right then we have email log analysis tool so in your organization you will be installing email log analysis tool as well so that you can check the logs of the emails later on all right this is your preparation phase for handling and responding to email security incidents all right then how you are going to detect and contain email security incident guys now what are the indication of email attack tell me how you are going to check that there is an email attack in your organization tell me anyone all right headers i am talking about i am not talking about analysis right now i am talking about the indication the symptoms first is the unavailability of your email server all right second is you will not be able to access the system all right as soon as you will be opening an email all right a malicious email so what will happen you will not be able to access the system right then your system will be slow all right it will be slow after you open an attachment from an email your system becomes slow that is again an indication all right suddenly the increase of advertisement and spam emails is there in your system that is again an uh, you can say indication then we have next that is changes to the theme and interface of email web pages all right that is your indications all right then we have what are the indication of identity theft guys what are the indication correct mail getting failure notification that is again an indication now indication of identity theft is guys you are no longer receiving credit card bank and other 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 utility bills all right there are unfamiliar changes to your credit card that you cannot recognize all right you will be charged for uh, certain kind of items medical treatments or services you never received 
all right and you will not be you are not receiving the bills towards your electricity gas water and all those kind of things so these are the indication of your identity theft it means that someone other person is using your identity all right so how you are going to detect now that was indication of this is detection guys now how you are going to detect phishing or spam emails then detection how you are going to check whether the email that comes in is spam or phishing email. all right so for that first thing is unexpected attachment from unknown users clients and vendors first thing all right you are you are getting unexpected uh, you can say attachments all right then second is attachment with unusual or unrecognized formats all right now there is a difference in the email id of the sender and the display name all right this is again our uh, detection technique then you will be having what emails with links which display different website or url when hovered or or have url with incorrect name that is again a detection technique all right there will be misspelling mistakes all right there will be the the email will be starting with dear sir or ma'am instead of writing your name it will be starting with dear sir or ma'am all right the subject will be different and the content will be different all right these are the detection techniques of your mails now we have certain tools guys those who are asking yeah yeah sneha yeah, will be coming to that part all right analysis part i'm coming now there are certain tools guys that you can use for detecting and uh, you can say phishing and spamming mails one tool i have given you is netcraft all right there's a tool that is called netcraft okay then we have fish tank all right fish tank this is again a tool okay fish tank <laughs> then we have next how you are going to contain email incidents you can note down the name of these two tools netcraft and fish tank all right they are used for uh, you can say detecting your phishing and spam emails all right then we have next that is containing email incidents how you are going to contain it guys first is isolating all right yeah you can praveen you can the office time do what it provides an open api for developers all right and researchers so that you can do what you can integrate it with other tools like right? sci tools all right that is the function of your fish tank now how to contain all right first is isolate the system second is uh, you will be asking the question from the user of the email all right so that you can find the details of the attack all right and the user account third thing is uh, you will be asking the user the victim that has he downloaded any kind of attachment clicked on any kind of link all right so that you will be getting some insight of that all right and you will be doing what you will be uh, you will be uh, creating a sandbox environment so that you can check the behavior of the of the emails all right and the malicious attacks all right now uh, you can say uh, if the email is containing any kind of malicious program so you will be doing what you will be proceeding with malware incident process right that is static and dynamic all right then you will be doing what you will be reporting the spam and phishing mails to the service provider all right that is what you can do when you are containing the email incidents all right then we have my next guys that is analyzing the email addresses all right now uh, sneha has given us point that analyzing the email headers so email headers are very important guys all right it's very important so in email header we have two kind of things that is called spf spf and we have dkim now spf stands for sender policy framework all right and dkim stands for domain key identified mail all right we have domain key 
identified name. So these are the two things that we check. All right. Apart from that, in the headers we check the return path of the mail, the recipient. Uh, I uh, you can say uh, email address. We'll be checking the name of an email server. We'll be typing. Uh, you can say checking the email sending service. All right. We'll be getting the IP address of the sender. IP address of the receiver. The unique message number. All right. Date and time the email was sent. And along with that, the attachments, the files, the data you are getting along with that email. Right. These are the things that you will be checking. All right. You are analyzing in the email header. All right. Got it. Now, how you get the email address, guys? Let me show it to you. Let me show it to you for Gmail. Those who uh, those who know, it's very good. Those who don't have the information, let me show it to you. This is my Gmail account. All right. Now I am opening my Gmail account, guys, and I'll be opening an email in front of you. All right. Let's suppose. Let's suppose this hacker news. All right. Now I want to uh, open the header of this particular platform. All right. How I am going to do it? I'll be clicking on this more, then I'll be going into show original. And as soon as I'll be doing it, guys, you'll be this is the header, all right. See, this is the header. All right. Now in this header, I'll be showing you those two things. That is SKM and DKIM. All right. So these are this is your header. In this header, you get all the information. All right. All the information you get over here. Okay. This is how you check the email header. Is it clear? Now, first is checking sender's policy framework. That is SPF. So, where I'm going to check it? I'm going to check it over here. All right. It is somewhere. Let me check SPF. 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 This and DKIMC. Correct. These are the two things. Okay. SPF is what? It is email validation protocol. All right. SPFS email validation protocol used by domain owners. Why they use it? So that they can prevent spoofing of emails. All right. That's why it is under authentication. All right. Authentication process. All right. So SPFS pass. It means that it is genuine. All right. So you as an incident handler can analyze the authentication of the sender all right by checking the spf result all right spf result now there are certain kind of uh, terms in spf guys over here you can see spf is equals to pass right apart from that we have other things also in spf what are these we have none we have pass we have neutral we have fail and we have temp error, temp error, and we have permanent error. So what are these? These are the indication that you will be getting with SPF, all right? If you are getting none, it means that no SPF record has been found for this domain, all right? Second is pass. Pass means <coughs> SPF records, the record exists, and IP address is authorized, from which you are getting the email. Then we have neutral. Neutral means the domain owner, whoever the owner of that domain, he don't wants to disclose his identity, right? Although it is authorized, but he don't want to disclose the identity. That is your neutral. Then we have fail. All right. What is fail? Mm -hmm. Fail means the IP address is not authorized to send email for this domain. It means that they have spoofed it. All right. Then we have temp error. Temp error means there is a temporary error because of which the you can say uh, <coughs> the details are not available. And we have permanent error. What is permanent error? Permanent error means the SPF records cannot be verified. All right. That is your SPF. It's very important, guys. If you if you want to check the emails incident and emails in this, none means. SPF records are not, not found for that particular domain. That is your none. All right. So in this case, in my case, it's showing you pass. All right. It means that pass means the SPF record exists and IP address is authorized. See, let me show you. Okay. This is my email, guys. All right. Any email. Now what I'm going to do is I'm clicking on this more. 
and over and over you will be getting this option show original okay mayank you will be getting this option show original and in this show original you will be getting this now you will be scrolling down so this is the header complete header of your mail all right complete header using the, using this header in forensic investigation later on what we do if there is a email incident in the organization what we generally do using this headers guys we try to locate the ip address the geo location every information about the ip address from where it came all right that is the thing we use it for okay so this is your email header all right i hope i have some something over here let me show it to you mm. online email tracker yeah this one now what are we doing is let me show you let's suppose this was the email all right this hacker news so i want to get the information from where it came all right so over here i'll be copying the whole header all right of this email whole header everything from this header i'll be copying all right everything i'll be copying and then what i'll be doing is after copying everything let it let it copy i'll be copying it and what i'll be doing is copy and then i'll be pasting that over here all right everything i'll pasting it over here and then i'll be clicking on start tracking so it will be giving me the whole information guys all right all the information it will give me this is how the forensic investigator works let it work let us check okay so this is the information guys this is the ip address from where this email has been originated all right this is from united state this is the phone number and this is the path from where i got the information right this is the server number 1 2 so you mean to say that like uh, whenever we got any mail uh, yeah. we can uh, go and uh, Uh, yeah, check you can always, yeah, you can. Not only over here, there are so many tools. I am giving you one of the examples. All right, there are so many oh. tools to check. Just by your email header, because your email header is the thing that contains the information. All right. So what I am doing, I am using that email header over here. Right. That's why. Okay. So this is one second. Where we can? Uh, where, uh, the original question. This is no, cyber no. forensics. Uh, can I get the original message where we can yeah. from? You want to get the original message? You are telling. Right? Yeah. See, this is my yeah, message. Yeah. No, no. In yes. original. This is my original. Uh, let me open my message. Huh. All right. Okay. This is my message. So you will be going over here in more. Okay. okay. You will be clicking over here, and over here you will okay. be getting this show original. As soon as you will be clicking on show original, you will be getting this. So this is the header. Huh. So you first thing is you will be checking your SPF and DK. This is your SPF and this is your DKI. All right, to check. I am not. Uh, huh. I am not going to DKI right now. I am just explaining SPF. All right. So this is the headers you can so, check. All right. Okay. From where we need to copy the entire uh, uh, header. From, From the top. Entire, uh, deliver to to the last. This is your. This is your header, oh, okay. right? So you need to copy everything. Okay. 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 And in uh, Google search, what we need to? Uh, how do? How can we find the tools like uh, header? Uh, what is the uh, key term? You can type uh, email, tracker. email tracker. Email tracker. Email tracker. Yeah, email tracker, and you will be getting okay. so many tools. All right. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Then we have guys. Next thing that is called DKIA. All right. The first thing I explained you is SPF. Second is your DKIA. Now what is DKIA? Again, it is an email authentication. All right. That is designed to protect or to detect spoofing. All right. Now DKIA is used by the domain owner. All right. All right. the domain owner can encrypt the domain outgoing mail headers and add a digital signature to the outgoing mail for better authentication all right okay so that is why dmki is used okay 
So you are, uh, you can say uh, if you are working as an incident handler in the organization, so you can analyze the integrity of the email by analyzing its DKIM result. Now DKIM results also have these things. So for DKIM also we have pass, we have neutral, we have fail, then we have imp error. Guys, don't do this. Wait, let me share my screen again. If you'll be clicking on share screen, then my screen will be uh, removed. All right. Now we have what? <coughs> Imant will be taking the break at uh, 3.50 if it is okay. Three minutes more. All right. Let me explain this DKIM and then we'll be done. Okay. For that we have pass. We have neutral. Then we have fail. Then we have temperature, and then we have permanent. All right, permanent error. So these are what pass means the email is signed, and the signature passes the verification test. Second is neutral. So the mail is signed, but the signature has syntax error. All right, so that's why it cannot be processed. Fail means the mail is signed, and the signature does not pass the verification test. All right, then we have temp error. Temp error means mail is not verified. All right, due to temporary errors and permanent error means mail is not verified due to permanent errors. All right, that is your what? That is your DKIM. Okay, email authentication service. Is it clear? So those who are having, you can say a Yahoo mail, they can use it. Click on more option in your in your email. Open your email and click on more option. And you can get this, uh, you can say, uh, option. In that, you will be clicking on view raw message. And you will be getting the whole information, original message, all right? So, for your email headers, guys, we have a tool that is called MX Toolbox, all right? Tools. That was given by SP, all right? One of the guy, he, he uh, gave us the tool name, all right? SP gave us MX tool name, that's correct, all right? So MX Toolbox is a tool, all right. MX Toolbox is a tool to verify, all right. The email headers. Apart from that, we have email header analyzer, all right. Email header analyzer. Then we have another tool that is called your IP track online, all right. IP track online dot com. So these are what guys, these are the tools, all right? Yeah, email track pro also. All right, these are what, these are your tools. Let me write it over here. Email track pro. So these are what guys, these are the tools that you can use. All right, is it clear? Apart from that, you can check the email validity also. All right, as an incident handler, it is your responsibility to check the validity of the received email. So. For checking the validity of the e CPL guys, there is a website that is called Central Ops. Let me open it. That is Central Ops. All right. This is the website, centralops.net. So over here, you can do one thing. You can check, click on email dossier, and you have to type the email, right? Whatever email you get. And as soon as you'll be typing it over here, it will be checking the validity of the email. All right, let's suppose I'll be typing deeper word. All right, deeper word 4489 at gmail.com. Is it something like the email address is really exist or not? Is it? Yeah, yeah. Because there is a website, guys, that is that is there to create the fake email addresses. All right, you might could have heard about it. Have you heard about that website that is called, I guess, uh, fake email, to create the fake email, we have a website. I'm not getting the name of that website. What is the name? Yeah, MKI. EMK, this one. MKI fake mailer. This is a website from where you can create fake mails. You can again note down the name of this website, all right? It is a secure website, HTTPS website. Let me open it. So using this website, you can create fake emails. See, 
you can create fake emails and send to anyone. This is the website, MKI Fake Mailer. All right, so to, to verify, all right, this is the tool, email dossier. All right. Yeah, yeah, we have so many, so many shares, all right. This is a tool that is very uh, well known tool, all right. That is MKI's mailer, all right. So this is what, this is a tool. Apart from that, share is also shared a uh, link, guys. You can open it. Okay, let me open it. Let's see this one. Again, another tool, anonymousmail.com, all right. So these are what, these are your fake email messages, all right. So this is. You have to check as an incident handle. Got it? So let's take a break, guys. And after the break, after five minutes, we'll resume and we'll be checking that how we are going to examine the originating IP address of an email. All right? Thank you. This Is your conference will now be recorded. All right. Please share the screen. Do a third. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, guys. All right. Then we have inside a thread. What does inside a thread guys? Anyone? What do you mean by inside a thread or inside a data? Anyone? What is inside a thread? A disgruntled liberal, right? Insider threat. Yeah, yes, yeah. An insider is an employee, all right. He is a trusted person or person having access to critical assets. All right. Now, insider attack involves using privilege as access to intentionally violate the rules or threat to the organization. Uh, you can say it's information resources and information system. All right. So, insider attacks are performed by following people that's correct that's correct goody it is it is performed by the following people all right i'm writing it over here privileged users your disgruntled employees then we have terminated employees Then we have next accident prone employees. Then we have third parties, correct? And at last we have untrained staff. So these are what these are your insider threats. These are being performed by insider threats that are being performed by these people. All right, that is your insider threat. Now, what is the impact? The impact is very, very, you can say, uh, very, very huge. And why it is effective? It is effective, guys, because it is easy, easy to launch. Prevention is difficult because that person already knows the security policy network architecture of the organization. All right, it can easily succeed. All right, it's easy. It's very easy for the employees, uh, the insider threat employees, to cover their actions. That's why that that's why insider attacks are very effective. All right. Now we have certain kind of types of insider threats. Guys. We have certain kind of types. So I'm writing it over here. Types of insider threats. So what are the types? We have malicious insider. I'm writing it over here so that you can take the screenshot. Malicious insider. Then we have negligent insider. Then we have professional insider. Then we have next that is compromise insider. All right. These are what these are the type of incident insider threats. All right. So what is malicious insider? Any disgruntled terminated employee, all right, who steals data or destroy the company's network intentionally by injecting malware into the network, that is called malicious insider. Then we have negligent insider. Who is it? 
these are the people who are uneducated on potential security threats all right that is your negligent insider then we have professional insider professional insider is a person who harms the organization all right by stealing the data from the organization all right by identifying the weakness and vulnerabilities of the organization and then selling the confidential information to the third parties or the competitors all right that is your professional insider and at last we have compromise insider compromise insider is a person who has access to critical asset of the organization which is compromised by an outside outside attack that is your compromised insider now what are the driving force guys What are the driving force because of which the people become the insider threat? It can be work-related emotional uh, brilliance, right? It can be curiosity. It can be challenge quotient. It can be corporate espionage, right? It can be uh, you can say political ideologies. Yeah, any grudge that's correct. It can be uh, you can say uh, unsatisfaction with the salary, with the behavior of the manager, with the politics that is going inside the organization, and it can be financial gain also. All right. So these are the driving force behind the insider attack. All right. Then we have next. What are the common attacks carried out by insiders? All right. What are the common attacks? They can do eavesdropping. They can do wiretapping. They can do the theft of computer and other devices in the organization. They can create false information. Correct. They can do social engineering within the organization. They can do tailgating. They can perform piggy backing. They can do data theft. All right, and they can do privilege escalation. Also, these are the attacks that are being carried on by inside data. All right. Then we have in the organization, guys, we have a method to catch. All right, the insider threats. All right, how we are going to catch them? There are certain two kind of methods. I'll be telling. But before that, how you are going to prepare to handle insider threats? How you are going to prepare, guys? Tell me. First is you can train the employees to detect and avoid social engineering attempts. Mm -hmm. All right. Second is you will be regularly conducting security awareness training inside the organization. All right. Then you will be briefing the employees. How to identify and report serious yeah, espionage events? All right. Then you will be implementing policies that prohibit employees from disclosing any information to the third parties. All right. You will be deploying employee monitoring software in the organization. All right. You'll be performing a through background check of new employees. You might have seen what happened nowadays. Our organization hires you. So at the time of hiring, they ask you your reference. Correct. We have to now. You have to give the name of three or four people. All right. Uh, then the organization do what? They cross check your information with those people. Many of the organization, very reputed organization, they do what? They even do the police verification on you. That is called background check. So that to check that whether the pe person whom they are hiring is is good or not. All right. That's why they perform a uh, background checking. All right. Apart from that, you will be deploying Honeypot, DLPs, Law of Management, IDN, IDS, SIM tools, and Behavior Analysis tools. All right, in the organization. All right, these are your preparation steps. Now, what are the indicators of insider threats? Tell me. What are the indicators? How? Let's suppose in your organization there is an insider threat. So how, as an incident hunter, as a security guy, you will be able to detect it? Tell me. What are the indicators? Anyone? You will be having missing logs or modified logs of all the network devices, right? You will be you can see the changes in network usage patterns, all right? Then there will be behavioral and temporal changes. There will be missing or you can say critical data, all right? Correct. That is failed logins. You will be having unusual business activities. You you can see unconsistent working hours of that particular person. All right, 
the for the logging of different user accounts of different system and different locations so these are what these are the indicators correct data uploading unauthorized access to physical assets right increase or decrease in productivity of the employee so this is what these are the indicators all right that as an incident handler you have to check all right then we have detecting insider threat guys so there are two methods of detecting an insider threat that is called first is called mole detection and second is called profiling now what is mole detection uh are you guys in a habit to watch uh, movies especially the the fiction or the real one so in that what happens there was a very famous movie of world war time i don't know uh, the name in that uh, okay let's see the movie because we don't have time in mole detection what what the organization do is let's suppose out of 1000 people the organization has a suspicion that on two people all right or on three people or five people that they can be the insider threats so what the, the the top management will be doing they will intentionally discussing some important details in front of those guys those five people all right okay and they will be waiting because they have just discussed the particular confidential information in front of those five people so they will check that whether the information is being leaked or not in the public or to other entity if it has been leaked it means that there is that person is particular person is responsible all right okay that is your mole detection okay again i am repeating in this method what happens is a data is given to a person and if that information makes its way to the public domain then there is a mole all right that is mole detection second method is your profiling so what happened in profiling guys is in profiling you will be checking you will be observing the behavior of an individual when he is alone when he is in group and when he is you can say uh, you can say he he uh, uh, is in the group all right not official group but uh, other groups also all right you will be checking the behavior all right but why because see every person is unique right so individual profiling defines the pattern of normality of a given individual all right so that is two methods mole detection and profiling all right is it clear is it clear guys apart from that you can you will be doing what you will be checking the log analysis all right you will be checking the logs of your server databases firewalls ids ips and other devices to find any suspicious activity of the user all right you will be analyzing network logs you will be analyzing server logs you will be analyzing database logs and uh, you will be analyzing you will be collecting that information and correlate them using siem tools all right okay is it clear is it clear guys all right then we have next guys that is your uh, you can say uh, you will be checking for removable media all right because many a times it happens that insiders can just exfiltrate the business critical data all right by using usb drives dvd drives pdas and other portable media devices right that's why you might not see many of the organization many of the organization you are not allowed to carry even a single pen drive i have been to bangalore uh, last last uh, in, in the month of january in manita park it comes under your sez right uh, so what happened is i was carrying a pen drive in my bag as a trainer so they check my bag and they ask you cannot carry it i said why because they said because we have some policies all right even the employees are not allowed to carry the usb drives all right why because of this reason all right okay got it guys then you can look for the history of the device connected to all the operating system access by the system all right how you can do it in your windows operating system guys you can check it by the following thing let me let me show it to you we have device manager all right 
you can open your device manager in your device manager you can get you will be getting this list all right of all the devices in your computer so you have to do you have to go in view all right and in view you have to go for show hidden devices all right as soon as you'll be clicking on show hidden devices it will be showing you some list all right so over here you will be doing what you will be checking portable devices see these are what these are the devices that have been connected to my computer till now all right see in this one. these are the portable devices okay so i can get the list of all the portable devices which can which are being connected to my computer till now all right this is the option is it clear is it clear guys then we have your browsing data all right you can check the browsing data the history all right that what the person of the particular insider threat has has been accessing all right through the browsers all right you can check your chrome history you can check your mozilla firefox history all right then we have next guys that is you will be checking the analysis you will be doing the analysis of the database you will be checking the transaction logs you will be checking error logs you will be checking the trace files you will be checking your link files all right you will be checking volatile database and depending upon that you can find it out that whether any suspicious activity has been done on the databases or not all right all right this is about checking your databases log then we have next we have certain kind of insider threat detection tools so these are your threat detection tools guys we have observe it all right observe it this is the tool all right it's a insider threat management solution tool what it do it provides organization with eyes on the end point all right and it gives the ability to the insider you can say incident handler to continually monitor user behavior all right this is observe it then we have data robot what is it it is automated machine learning platform and it is used to detect insider threats and it do what as it is an uh, you can say machine learning tool so it do what it combines predictive modeling expertise all right best practices of data science and experience to deliver accurate actionable predictions that is your data robot apart from that we have as i told you ecran system what is uh, do it helps incident handlers to detect monitor and analyze user base insider threats in the same way we have cyber r we have splunk db all right these are the tools then we have guys how you are going to contain the insider threats yeah they have three tools then we have how you can perform containment of the insider threats the you are first of all is you will be isolating the affected system all right you will be blocking all the access of suspicious employee including his email application account physical access cards network credentials everything all right then we have you will be seizing the allocated devices and you will be taking proper permission to seize their personal mobile device all right because they can have they, they can contain yeah, their personal devices can contain the data right we have to analyze that as well then you will be informing the concerned department and ask them to check for potential losses you will be taking uh, you can say registering a proper complaint and uh, taking proper legal action against that employee all right you will be truly checking the suspect for portable devices whether he is carrying some stolen data or not all right and then you will be ordering all the users to change their account and system password as soon as possible so this is your containment step then we have eradication step guys for eradicating inside the threads what we have you will be using access control all right you will be using data encryption techniques you will be isolating the storage all right the organization as a as a as a um, security consultant telling you the organization should never store sensitive information on network computer all right all right the storage system and devices should not be accessible to regular network office or network traffic right that is you isolate the storage then change password regularly then you will be doing what you will be examining employees behavior or eradicating you will be keeping check on employees expenditure and income generation then anticipate and manage negative workplace issues conduct background checks all right 
and monitor all the activities of vendors and third party staff. These are what these are some of the eradicating steps, all right, of insider threats. Got it? Is it clear, guys? Then we have physical security, implement security, system security policy, employees, uh, you can say make it mandatory for employees to lock their data centers or computers when leaving the desk, all right? Ensure physical security of the server rooms, placing physical locks on them, place surveillance cameras, ensure all the meeting rooms are sound too, all right, so that there will be no uh, eavesdropping or wire sniffing, all right. Ensure the strength of the, the all the documents containing crucial information before discarding. All right, these are what these are you eradicating physical security. And at last we have recovery step. So how we are going to recover from insider attacks, guys? You will be gathering the evidences, all right, that you will be requiring. That you will be requiring uh, to submit in the court of law. Then you will be doing what? You will be that stolen data impacts the user account, change the password, secure the backup media, implement separation of duties. Ah, one more thing, one more thing, yeah. You might would have heard about these terms, right? I guess you might would have heard about these terms. Separation of duties. Then we have next job rotation. Then we have next that is mandatory weekends. Have you heard about these terms? Guys, have you heard about these terms? Mandatory holidays, yeah. So that's what, why? Because the organization wants to check. Let's suppose I'm working as an employee, guys, all right? I'm working in the shift that is in the morning shift, 9 to 5. All right. Now, if there is no reason for me, yeah, do a control, yeah. So, why it is, guys? Because, see, if I'm working from the shift from 9 to 5 and I'm working, all right, without any job rotation, so what will happen? I will become, uh, you can say, uh, very, uh, you can say, I can, I, I can uh, skip my work, I can, I can uh, neglect certain kind of things, right? But if there is job rotation, I know that after one week, some other person will be taking my place. So what I'll be doing? I'll be doing my work correctly, right? So that other person who is coming, he will not complain to the manager. That sir, when I came, this, these are the things I found. Is it or not? Is it or not? That's why we have job rotation, right? Then we have separation of duties. What does it mean? It means that the two departments, let's suppose I'm, you are in production department, I am in security department. So there will be separation of duties between us, all right? Got it? Then we have mandatory holidays. Mandatory holidays are also given uh, in the organization. Why? So that the organization, in the absence of that employee, the organization can check the work he has done, he or she has done. The same case happened with that uh, ICIC bank hat, Sutra Pucha. The organization asked her again and again to go for mandatory holidays and she never, never went. And later on you can see she has been found guilty along with us when we give one case, right? So that's why these are the process, these are the techniques that are being adopted by the organizations, all right? Apart from that, recovering guys, you have, uh, you can say, uh, uh, I told you, that is chain of custody of documents, data backup plan you should have, all right? You should have, uh, you can say, uh, separation of duties, you will be having job rotations, you will be having mandatory holidays. These are what, these are the controls that the organization Apart from that, what are the best practices against employee insider threats? All right, disable USB drives in your network, as I told you. Enforce a security policy. Develop an insider incident response plan. Do not ignore physical security. Check. So these are what these are the practices the organization can do on your, you can say, insider threats. Okay. So these are the things, guys, that we have to cover in this in this whole program that is incident handling. All right, these are the things that we have to discuss. So you can do one thing: you can take the screenshot for this. I have provided you, uh, uh, you can say, uh, feedback form, guys. You can go through the feedback form. All right, and then what we'll be doing is. Uh, 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 notes mean to say uh, SOC, I didn't get to.
these are the notes which i am giving you all right these are the notes study material see study material uh, you if you will be going for the uh, official course fare all right then you will be getting the official course fare all right apart from that if you want you can search over the internet for the for the uh, you can say yeah ecih is good see what happen is there are two organization right comtia and ec council so in comtia what they have did is they have included sanjas costia so what they did is in comtia they have included incident handling in their cysa course on. but what ec council has done is they have made a separate course of ec ecih all right incident handling with nine modules in it all right that's why it is considered as good ecih that is version 2 all right ecih version 2 that is new in the market that includes the main you can say all the concept of incident handling so anyone wants to i ask any question guys you can let me know and i hope everyone has filled the feedback form please fill the feedback form guys because of the feedback form you will be getting the cp score all right depending upon the attendance and everything you will be getting it. uh please please submit it uh didn't you got the didn't you got the uh, link so within one week or two week you will be getting the uh, you can say your cp score guys all right so this is a link i'm again sharing it this is a link which you have to click and you have to fill the form all right i have provided guys this is the link yeah yeah i have provided this is the link or oh, wait let me open it over here let me provide it over here from here i am giving you the link okay got the link everyone yeah himat uh, did you responded or not wait 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 me, no me. i will not respond i will not respond no problem just give me a minute ha huh? i'm sharing it once again just give me a minute let me share the link with you guys again Actually, I respond responded to the previous one. Do I need to do it again? No, no, no. It's okay. That's yeah. what I was uh, talking about. That's the yeah. that's the thing. You have to just respond to that one only. Yeah. Everyone fill the form. Yeah, Narendra has shared it, guys. Please, uh, please, uh, please find it over here. Narendra shared it once again. So this is the feedback form you can uh, you can fill, and then you will be. Uh, getting your cp score all right so this is all for this training guys i hope you enjoyed it and uh, depending on your feedback depending upon Nima. your uh, response we will be conducting yeah yeah just a minute nimar himan here i am waiting uh, yeah, sorry yeah. sorry for the interruption i am saying i am well when i click on the link it says you have already responded why it saying this you have already responded i don't know Oh, yeah. Just give me a minute, Anil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, earlier I attend one training, maybe because of that. No, 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 no. It's okay. Let me share it once again. No problem. This is the link. Please check for this one if you are getting the same thing. Okay. Uh, this one. All right. Let me let me try it. Same message. Yeah. It says you have already responded. No Same problem. Message. That depending upon that, uh, you'll be getting it. All right. Depending upon that, thing, you'll be getting. Okay. So you will be there. I'll give you CP point then. Mm hmm. Don't worry. 
but just okay. just uh, just inform your uh, coordinator in this case inform your coordinator okay i will come back all right so thank you so much guys for your uh, attendance attending the meeting depending upon your feedback and everything it once again all right in future also so thank you so much for joining and uh, for those who wants to get in touch this is my number again i'm giving you the number for the same number okay guys please mute yourself please mute yourself thank you now this is my number guys and this is my email address you can find me uh you can ping me over here this is my email address all right apart from that you can also find me on linkedin all right those who wants to uh connect to me on linkedin you can you can just find me on linkedin as well all right social media yeah yeah na rain that's possible we have so many social engineering tools it's it's over here uh, praveen can you see my screen it's over here i have written it over here it's my email address deepakbird4489 at gmail.com and this is my number all right you can reach me on this number all right uh navin there are so narend there are so many methods all right so many methods in the next uh, session whenever we'll be having next session at that time i'll be teaching those methods all right uh, what i was showing you is this is my linkedin profile guys you can uh, join me on linkedin also and thank you 